Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you for having me here, inviting me tonight, Doug. I appreciate it. This is uh, quite the honor to be here. Remember the 2,977 lives that we lost on September 11, 2001. My September 11 day started out like many others, in crystal blue skies, in perfect weather. The same could be said about what everyone was doing that day, right down to the clothes we were wearing on that beautiful blue September morning when American Airlines Flight 11 struck the North Tower at 8.46 a.m. I distinctly remember standing in front of a mounted television at the Greenbot office for the Maryland National Guard Honor Guard off of Kenilworth Avenue. I was standing with Tech Sergeant Tony Queen, Tech Sergeant Michael Blaze, Staff Sergeant Patrick Sullivan, and Sergeant Robert Walters. We, looked, we all looked on the horror as a North Tower burned from the point of impact from the 92nd to the 98th floors. As we continue to watch the new news coverage in the North Tower, we start to speculate the size of the, uh, of the aircraft that struck the North Tower. The news was initially reported that it was a small commuter plane, like a Cessna. We disagree with that theory as the size of the impact of the, of the hole, along with the amount of smoke that was produced. Then at approximately 9.03 a.m., United Airlines Flight 175 struck the South Tower, and all those theories and speculations being tossed around came to a screeching halt as American knew it was under attack. My fellow honor guardsmen and I had a sense of panic and dread come over us as we knew the magnitude of what was unfolding. Of all the images of that day, the one that stood out to me the most was of the jumpers jumping from the North Tower to the South Tower of the World Trade Centers. The choices those innocent people had to make, I often wondered if I was put in a similar situation, would I have made the same choice? All funeral missions that we had scheduled that day were rescheduled to a later time as America was under attack in a state of emergency. Then at approximately 9.37 a.m., American Airlines Flight 77 struck the Pentagon, near our nation's capital. I'll never forget the moment shortly after when Tech Sergeant Tony Queen shouted out, Oh my God, we are at war. It was at this time that it dawned on me that I'll be called up in the near future to serve my country. I will serve my country and I would be deployed with the 1220 Transportation Company out of Parkville, Maryland, less than two years later, on February 2003, and I was deployed to May of 2004, in support of Operation Enduring Freedom and the liberation and transition of Iraq. As we continued to look on, we heard the roar of jets flying overhead. We rushed outside to look up to see the underbellies of 716s flying fighter jets flying to our defense of our nation's capital. After watching the fighter jets rush to defense of our nation's capital, I apologize, it was F-16s, not 716s. Uh, we went inside the office and continued to watch the events of the day unfold. At approximately 9.59 a.m., the South Tower, which was the second tower to be struck, collapsed. And in a cloud of smoke and debris, people were rushing and running in panic, uh, leaving the area as the aftermath of the South Tower's collapse spread throughout Lower Manhattan. All that remained standing was the North Tower of the World Trade Center. The news coverage quickly shifted to Shanksville, Pennsylvania, where United 93 crashed into a field near, uh, not too far from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and killing all 44 passengers aboard, on, aboard the flight. Aboard this flight was Todd Beamer, Jeremy Glick, Mark Bingham, and Tom Burnett. It was the heroic city gentlemen that prevented United 
Flight 93 to reach its intended target of the nation's capital. Of course, you remember the famous words of Todd Beamer of Let's Roll. That is embodied the spirit of America, the never give up attitude of America. As the time went on and the morning continued to unfold, we watched in horror as the North Tower collapsed at approximately 10.28 a.m. Now neither of the World Trade Center buildings in Lower Manhattan stood, and all that remained was a large pile of debris and ash. 2,977 Americans perished that day, and America was chained forever. I remember listening to my grandfather, Dave Radaval, who flew 52 bombers. My mom, uh, Susan, made the correction, was B-25s. But he flew them against the Japanese in World War II in the Pacific. I'll never forget listening to him talk about Pearl Harbor and the significance that Pearl Harbor had in America and how it changed the course of America. In closing, we look back and reflect on how our world has changed in the past 20 years since September 11, 2001. As a country, we become more vigilant with heightened situational awareness from the evolving threats to our national security. We've been going as far as protecting our cyberspace, cyber networks that protect our banks, communications, and our general safety. In addition, we have created the Department of Homeland Security, which in turn has produced thousands of jobs in organizations such as the TSA. The Department of Defense has also made great strides in the defense of our great nation with technology from military aircrafts to ground defense, to health and nutrition, even down to the camouflage uniforms that our sailors, Marines, soldiers, and airmen wear today. September 11, 2001 showed the horror of terrorism, the selfless service and sacrifice of our brave first responders and military personnel, and also showed the patriotic resilience of our great country to remember, rebuild, and by God's grace be a more generous and stronger nation for tomorrow. Thank you so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you to Doug. Uh, thank you to all of you. Thank you for being here and uh, remembering the 2,977 lives that were lost on September 11, 2001. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so 